our podcast though now? I guess so. Okay. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> yeah, welcome to episode 82 of Tim Talk, the podcast at the DC Anime Universe, co-created by Bruce Tim. I'm Chris Lord. I'm Cameron Dexter. And Cameron is so, so angry. Cause... I want to be watching Deadpool 2 right now. <laughs> you don't want to be here I doing mean, this podcast sure. with me? These were fine. I mean, the second one was good. I mean, but Deadpool this is, two. This is a one. Chris, we do this once, Cameron. We this stuff Deadpool already came two. out. Deadpool hasn't come out yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't want to spend time with me? Right, we can go together. But if there's only one ticket, then yeah, I'm going by myself. Well, clearly that's what you do these days. <laughs> yeah, I had a horrible movie theater experience yesterday. What was I it? Don't want to talk about it on the podcast. I, I want think, to talk I, about well, it on the podcast. You do, I think. Yes. Uh, so I made a horrible decision, and I went to go see uh, Life of the Party. Is that the new Melissa McCarthy film? Oh, the really crappy remake of Back to School? Yes. I was going for, um, oh, God, what movie was I thinking of? Van Wilder. Kind of, but it wasn't that. It, what, watching this movie made me realize and wish that like I still found comedies funny. Because, like, I have a very low bar for, for entertainment. You do. Very low. Well established. Yes. The lowest bar possible. And this movie is, like, it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I'll throw that out there now. Seriously? Yeah. Seriously. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's it's because, like, it's not that they, it's not that they just go for the low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. It's everything about this movie is the low-hanging fruit. Really? To the point where, like, the only part of the movie that gave me the slightest bit of joy was a nut shot. And like, that was, is it, the, that was the peak Melissa McCarthy the, take the nut shot. Uh, no. Um, uh, uh, Maya Rudolph. Oh, okay. Yeah. The best friend. Oh, well that makes sense. Um, but like I was, it was packed and I was not expecting it to be packed on a midday Sunday. Yeah. Um, so that was I was surrounded by four kind of groups of people my age. There mm -hmm. were four people on my left, four on my right, two on front, two on front left, and then three on front right that definitely snuck in. Okay, they were thirty minutes late, and all four groups were talking the entire time. Um, the front left was on her phone for half of the movie. Ugh. So finally, thirty minutes in, I lean in. I'm like, "Can you please just turn your brightness down?" And she's like. I guess for you. And I'm like, but your front row, the entire theater can, can see, see your it, phone. Yeah. I really, if I have like, if I could just summon the confidence and get the balls to do this, what I want to do is start an Instagram feed where I take photos with flash of people on their phone in movie theaters, <laughs> uh, just to shame them in any way possible. Cause it drives me actually shame crazy. Them, Do you think they'd actually be shamed by it? I think they'd just be mad that someone took a photo of them. They might be. And that's all that I care about. As long as they're as riled up as I am, yeah. then I win. I, I really want to like, in the situations, what I really want to do is pull a Hank Moody and just grab their phone and like throw it across the theater. Oh my God. So badly. Secondary to that, what I really want to do is grab their phone, walk out in the lobby and go, they wouldn't turn this off. Please kick them out. That would be even better. Yes. That That's like, I'm not, I wish, those are the days when I wish I was just a bad person sometimes, <laughs> where I could just do that. Oh, I know. Too, bad, I, I too used, bad you're a good person, Kim. I like, used to do it with ish. my mom. I, I would do it with my mom when we'd go to the movies, because she's one of the people, and I'm calling you out right here, live on the podcast, mother, because um, she knows she does it, and she knows it drives me crazy, because she won't turn her brightness down either. Oh, no. Uh, and yeah, so I would, Come on. there were a few movies, probably like for a, not a year, maybe a few months. Where when we walked in the theater, I would take her phone. Oh, uh, understandable. Yeah. She'd get mad, and mm. I really wouldn't care. No. Because it's a movie. It's a movie. You don't need to be on your phone. Mm. It's not a hard thing. It's an mm. hour and a half. No one is that important that they can't be on a phone. If you're that important, then watch it in your own private theater. I was very frustrated because of the people and of how bad... How horrible that movie was. So, uh, would you consider this a bat plug? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Both life of the party and just generally going to a movie theater? Yes. Because usually I enjoy the camaraderie of theaters. Like, you you brought it up last time. The you fans have broken me. You, I hate, hate, you I hate, hate the fans. I hate the fans. Now. I love I the fans. Hate, I hate them so much. So much. I get it. I understand. But I also love that energy in a theater. Fuck uh, it. No, I can't do it. I, I I know. I understand. Yeah, they can all go to hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I can just watch as their fan members like yell out no every time yeah. one of them evaporates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like God, just hearing 
I think I was just so riled up in that theater from the people talking and texting that I couldn't enjoy. I mean, obviously the comedy wasn't good, but yeah. I couldn't enjoy it in any level. And it made me even angrier that everyone else could enjoy the comedy. Well, because there's nothing. Okay, no, we've established this actually. The worst thing is having someone overly emotionally react to a film, <clears throat> Avengers Infinity War. Yes. The second worst thing is having someone laugh way too hard at something. Oh, the entire theater, though. Yeah, like you like that big, big old guffaw, and you're just like, this is like a chuckle yeah. worthy, maybe mm-hmm. max. And it's, it's like... And it's a Melissa McCarthy vehicle, so it's nothing beyond chuckle worthy, really. Right. And, oh. Oh, it's such a shame, because she is so genuinely talented. She just can't pick good projects anymore. She is. I, I think I might have brought this up before, but I hated her for a long time and it wasn't her because i the reason i hated her is because of how good of an actress she was yeah it was one role it was identity thief of her and jason bateman yeah that's not a good movie it's not but no. her character is terrible yeah it's just like the scum of the earth yeah um and i couldn't ever separate that character from her because mm-hmm. most of her characters are pretty much the same yeah uh it's the same with like you know John Cena and and every other muscle headed actor right now mm-hmm. they all play the same character. Um, I don't know why I went to him first. I, I don't know. <laughs> but he's calling you out, John Cena. John Cena, I'm calling you out here live on the podcast. We got a ring to the left. <laughs> I mean, but you're, you're just calling people out left and right. Your mom, John Cena. Yeah, yeah. Who's gonna I, kick I, your I, ass first? <laughs> I'm on a WrestleMania right now. <laughs> so I have not met John Cena, but I have met your mom. You I think she can take you. She can, because yeah. she has the psychological manipulation. Oh, um, god. oh my god. What, what have I wrought? <laughs> I, I'm done. I'm riled up now. You know, I was, I was worried about us having low energy because we're both super tired. Not a concern anymore at this no, point. No, <laughs> I have been waiting to talk about this. I have not opened my, ma- opened my mouth in 24 well, hours. <clears throat> if it makes you feel better, I am looking at Box Office Mojo right now for the weekend. And sadly, yes, Life of the Party did come in second. Um, over the weekend with like just shy of 18 million too much um, which is still well behind the third weekend right for the mm-hmm. Avengers at like 60 million but sometimes more importantly than actual gross I always am curious about the theater average because that gives you an idea of like ba- like how oh how how like, like how how many people were seeing it per screen mm-hmm. sort of thing right? yeah how is it selling yes and I am very very proud to say that at number 10, with a higher, a significantly higher, actually... Was your movie? It was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The documentary, RBG, had a higher theater average than Life of That's the Party. That's great. I almost went to see it. It's so I sh- good. I should have. Because I try... What's really upsetting, and I think what makes this whole story even worse, is I tried to see this movie twice. Not, not like, watch it twice, but I went to the theater Friday night... And the theater and the the speakers blew out in the trailers, uh, so they gave us a refund. So fate intervened, yes. and you ignored it. I did, and I shouldn't have. And I Can and we? I'm very upset with myself for doing so. Fool me once, I I know. Fool me seventeen years. <laughs> <laughs> Fool me for twenty five years. <laughs> God damn it. That's on me. But no, this is this is all on you. Then. It is. Yeah, I know it is. You, you were spared and you ignored it and just I went. Did. You just pummeled through. Mm-hmm. Oh god damn it! All right. But also, uh, one last tangent before we actually start this episode. Like it's the last tangent, right? Of the of the pre ramble. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I think I realized why uh, uh, Movie Pass changed their rules <clears throat> because can you get a cash refund for a film? Um, I don't know, actually. I've never okay. tried. Neither have I. But it made Did me... you? Did you get a refund for the first attempt to see No, they, Life of the they Party? gave us a... A voucher? Uh, yeah. Okay. And so I was wondering if people were manipulating the system and just... Uh, I guess that, that'd be a great thing to do is you could just stack up vouchers. Is like you could just pretty much go in every day, get use your movie pass for a movie before they set up these new rules. Yeah. You could just go in every day, you know, get a movie pass movie... And they'd be like, hi, can I exchange this for a voucher? And just, like, stack up vouchers for your friends. Um, to what end? I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, if you can't get cash back. Because, I'm like, if there's a theater that gives you cash back, then people are just, like, I don't, I don't horribly so. manipulating yeah, the I, system. Yeah, I don't think they would ever do that. That just seems like a really terrible use of their systems. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not an accountant. I don't know. It seems, I don't like, know a bad, it, I, it seems like a bad idea. Right. Yeah. But, I mean... 
they had to change their rules for some reason. And it couldn't just be because I go see two movies a week and that's costing them upwards of $100. No, because most, most people are like me spending. who use it maybe once. Yeah. Yeah, like I, barely, I, don't, I don't have time to go see movies ever, so I don't. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I don't have time to go see, the, see movies, so I don't have time to go to The Void. Oh, The Void was great. Without, Guys, that's my without, bat plug this week The Void. You had months, Christopher. No I, no, I have not. Christopher. You know my schedule, man. Christopher Lee Lloyd. <laughs> what? I don't know. You know Christopher my Tiberius Lloyd. Oh, I wouldn't mind. Wait, hang on. Did you see my Instagram over the weekend? My Instagram story? Yes, the DeLorean. Yes, I saw an actual Back to the Future DeLorean in the wild coming back from Palm Springs. That's amazing. I was blown you away. Palm, you can't fucking get mad <laughs> if you were going to the void when you were in Palm Springs. Yeah, I can. No, you can't. Yeah, because you wouldn't want to be on my trip. Let's be honest. I mean, different company. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to be on my big gay weekend, but I would have loved to have gone to the void with you. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not a fair comparison. Yeah, it is. No, it's yeah, not. Yeah, because you can't get upset with me for going to something you wouldn't want to go to. I'm not upset with you. You're <laughs> upset with me. And I'm saying you can't when you also had an exciting... Like, if you were doing nothing this weekend <clears throat> and you were sitting around your apartment, then yes, I might feel a little bad that I didn't invite you. Yeah. But no, you were out in Palm Springs. Yeah, it was great. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cameron Dexter. I was just, like, drunk in a pool for two days. It was so oh, fantastic. Oh, I'm so sorry. It must have been so hard for you to deal with me being at the void. It was. You know, I was out in the sun all day long. You just get tired. I, like, passed at, like, 9 p.m. on Saturday. It was great, actually. What news do you have? <laughs> um, okay, one thing I realized we didn't talk about last week, we probably should have. There's actual DC news. Not DCEU, mind you, but the launch of DC Universe. They finally told us what it's going to be called, the DC streaming service. Oh. Yeah. Did they now? Did you miss this? I did. I was too wrapped up in the in the poster that came out. Oh, I thought you were just too wrapped up in being angry at random people at <laughs> movie theaters. Oh, that I have plenty of space for that. Um, but yeah, so we know that <clears throat> obviously Titans will be on there. Yes. Did you see? The, oh, oh, live yes. action Titans. Yes, live action Titans. Then of course, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Young Justice Outsiders. Yes, we got the first poster. Looks good. Looks so good. Looks so I'm good. So excited. Super sure that. Oh, we also get Swamp Thing. The Harley Quinn R-rated show, which mm-hmm. went, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they just announced today that we're going to do Doom Patrol. So I think because Doom Patrol is going to be in Titans, are going to spin off. Now I don't think I've ever actually read anything with Doom Patrol in it, but I feel like they're referenced at the end of DC New Frontier. Not that you would know. Nope. Um, I mean, they were they were a big player in the last season of Teen Titans, which is why I know them. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, With, wait, no, uh, I didn't. Brain and, and not Mala Mala Zhang, uh, Minsua Mala. Okay. I, mean, uh, I, don't, I can't remember how much of that last season I've actually seen or not. It's great. Now, That's when, so didn't good. You, didn't you tell me there was a rumor circulating that we might be getting more? Oh, don't don't put it my heart I thought, like I thought you were telling me that. So I, would never, I would never spread such a rumor. I'm still hurt yeah. by that show. I don't know. Probably not. But anyways, like, so now we know it's a thing. It's coming along the pipeline. I'm very curious to see what the pricing model will be on it. Right. Um, I'm really excited for you to pay for it and to give me your login. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, not that you... I, I mean, I'll, I'll spread it for all of our fans. I'll, that's I'll true, take a actually, hit for at everyone. The, <laughs> at the end of the podcast, when we're giving our social media handles, you also reveal your DC Universe login. Yeah. Oh, what a kind soul you are. Look at you. Paying it forward. Not taking people's phones away to movie theater. Giving out your login. You know, I got to balance out this hatred with some kind <laughs> of love. Look at you crewing that good karma. Um... <laughs> So I was going to say, not that either of us give a shit, but apparently both Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Gotham have been renewed for final seasons. Final seasons? That's Final good. seasons. That, that, that's all. That's fine with me. Yeah. I, they survived this this broadcast apocalypse? Yeah. I know. It's crazy that, that was did. That was kind of the big news for me this week was so many shows yeah, got canceled. Got canceled. Lucifer got canceled, which I, I haven't really watched this season, but I liked it when I did. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Brooklyn Nine-Nine got canceled and then picked up by NBC. Yeah. Um, I, 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 that was going to be my bat plug. I finally started watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, it's good? the cancellation. It's so good. Yeah, I need to start watching it at some point. It's, it's, it's very underrated for how mm-hmm. funny it is. Oh, okay. I need to watch that yeah, one at some I'll point. I'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, a couple of other quick things. Uh, Kevin Feige mentioned that it looks like they are in the works to figure out how to introduce Miss Marvel. Yes, I saw that. Into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm mm-hmm. super excited about it. So obviously it's dependent on the release of Captain Marvel because that's a huge influence on... Miss Marvel. Right. But I love that character. I love her comics. Mm-hmm. She is, I think, the sort of hero that 
we should be having up on screen and Marvel has been really good about doing that so far. So I think I totally believe that they would like do this and do it with conviction and do it well. Yeah. Oh man. I don't know. I spent the weekend uh researching and learning about Miss Marvel or not Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel. Oh, Carol okay. Danvers this weekend. It was a fun little history trip for me. What did you learn? Give uh, us one interesting fact you learned about Miss Marvel. Captain uh, Marvel, that one. Captain Marvel. Uh she formerly Miss Marvel. Yes. She was the first uh female superhero to use Ms. instead of Miss. Oh. Uh, kind of helping with empowering the feminine movement of the 70s. Mm-hmm. Didn't really know that. Did not know that either. Uh, she also became binary or, or no, uh, century, no. She had another name because she absorbed the powers of a white star. Um, what now? Yeah. So in the <laughs> mid-90s, uh, she flew out into space and, stored, and and absorbed the powers of the White Star. Oh, because it was a really weird story where she was kidnapped, raped, and impregnated uh, by this uh, by this alien. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, this whole story has basically been redconned. Oh, God. Uh, no. Yeah. There's a reason Marvel was selling everything in, this, in the 90s. They were trying to cover this up. Oh. Um, and so that... Uh, that created her her child uh, was this alien that uh, the writers basically killed off immediately, uh, and then someone clone a rogue. A rogue uh, stole her powers. Yes, and basically the didn't put her in a coma. Maybe it basically manifested a second personality inside of her. Okay, so now it was Carol Danvers and Rogue fighting for control. And that basically split her into two people. And so now there was another Miss Marvel on Earth while um, Century slash Binary slash whatever her name was out in space was doing her space thing. Uh, And then that they're just like, "Mm, now we're going to deal with that later. Oh, my God. Just kind of wiped that clean. And that's as far as I made it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What a hole you dug yourself through there, Cameron. It was fascinating. It's amazing how much you can get through when you're waiting for apartment stuff to come through. Oh, oh God. Yeah, yeah. especially on that. Um, yeah, the, the only thing I ever really knew about her was that, yeah, she had Superman-like powers and that mm-hmm. um, I think it was like the Brotherhood kidnapped her and Rogue like held on to her long enough that she permanently absorbed her powers. Why Rogue could like fly was invulnerable. Mm-hmm. And I know at least in the cartoon, there was a whole thing about her feeling really guilty about it. And I think she visited Carol like in like the coma or something like in a coma or something like that at some point. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, I never really knew much about her. So mm-hmm. I imagine none of that will be present in the MCU. Oh, I'm sure that that storyline that I brought up will be the main point of the movie. <laughs> no, that'd be Captain Marvel two. That's right. We'll do all that. Yeah. But the darker sequel. Yes. Um, I have, okay. We'll do one. There's one other topic I want to talk about. Maybe we'll save it for next week because we've already gone on for so long. Um, but I was sad to see today that Marco Kidder died. Who was that? No, for I'm sick. sorry. The original Lois Lane, the Lois Lane from the oh, Richard Donner no. films. Yes. That yes. Really sad. And yeah, now she was obviously fantastic at those. And as per usual with Superman, she popped up in a whole bunch of other stuff along throughout the years. And I'm, I think she was in Lois and Clark, but then in like Smallville. And I, I think she had a role in Supergirl. I'm not sure. Um, but no, like her, that character is always great. And I know that she like had a lot of mental health issues at her time too. But I, I, I think towards later in her life, she kind of, it was binary. Yeah, okay, settled into a like comes to normalcy. But I was very sad to see that today. That, that is really sad. I know. Um, and then on one slightly happier note, did you watch the teaser trailer for Bohemian Rhapsody? No, that that came out. Yeah, there's not much to it to be perfectly honest. It okay. still looks good though. Mm-hmm. So they come out today. Yeah, it just came out today. Okay, I was, yeah, like, I've recapping been news. I've been locked in at work all day, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, I had like 20 minutes to like check out news before we started <laughs> doing this. Uh, and actually, speaking of 20 minutes of news. We've done it. We did it. Actually, that's not true. Yeah. We did it was 10 like minutes of three minutes rant. of news. <laughs> but it's fine. We'll go with it. Yeah. And actually, so bef- don't let me forget the topic that I want to talk about. We're going to do it next week is uh, the Russos revealed some of the characters. Oh, yeah. The side characters that, that died. That did or did not die in Infinity War off screen. Mm-hmm. That is a long topic of conversation. We will save that for next week. Yes. Um. But we'll are this. you tired of all of the memes that are coming out yet? Because I am fucking exhausted. So, some of them have been really good, though. Some have been really funny. 
there's one in particular I want to reference, but it's, I had to like do so many fucking spoiler reference, like spoiler t- like uh, tags, like time marks in last week's. I don't want to do that again, so I'm not going to talk about it. Okay. We'll do it next week when we're doing full-on spoilers, but there's one meme that I, I saw that... It, All right, we'll talk about it off air. It, ma- it made me laugh. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, why don't we go ahead and talk about what we're here to talk about. First episode of the week, The Demon Reborn. Yes. The return of Roz and Talia and Ubu. Mm-hmm. Good old Ubu. It's always great when we have a Batman episode during In a Superman lieu of episode. A Superman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, especially after last week. Yeah. Holy fuck. Um, I, this was not great. No. Um, I kind of like the general idea of, like, the Lazarus Pit's no longer working for Roz, and so he needs to find a new source to keep himself alive. I would believe that Tali would be going out of her way to try and help him do that. I think for me... This got bogged down in weird Superman unexplained pseudoscience. Yeah. Or, I was fine with the magic side of it. Like, if yeah. it was just the staff. So, so basically, uh, there's a Native American art exhibit. Uh, Lois says some racist stuff in front yep. of the Native American. <clears throat> uh, and then, it's a very important part of this episode. Yeah. Hey, at um, least she's called out on it. Yeah. So... I mean, uh, it's still play for laughs, so it's not the best. But... Right, yeah. Moving the step forward is when you're called out on your racist stuff. Um, <laughs> hey, I mean, it's more than most people will do. It's true. Um, <sighs> so Talia steals this Native American staff, which basically can steal a life force. Uh, yeah, that's what it seems like. Because mm-hmm. at one point we see Superman's hand get all wrinkly yeah. and shrivelly. For like a second. And I guess, I, I guess that explains why he's drained enough that they're able to keep him held together with like a cinder block handcuffs yeah uh so they're using the staff to steal superman's strength to transfer over to Roz to bring him back to life to bring him back to youth yeah um so if it was just that that i i would have bought them that much magic where it's yeah. just like like you know crystal absorbs energy and then you can spit it back out to someone else like that's all i needed but yeah and then it got and then they brought in science. So we're t- and so okay, this is a question I wasn't sure, and maybe you know the answer to, but Probably I think not. it wasn't explained no matter what. Was the village they went to at the end related at all to the staff? I don't think so. Because, so because I mean, it looks like those old. And forgive me, it's been I think like the fourth grade was when I studied all this stuff, like third fourth grade. But like I want to say like the Pueblo Indians had the. We studied very different Native Americans. You probably did, yeah. But I, I remember, the I remember there was a culture. I thought it was American Native American culture that had the cities built into the cliffs like that. I thought that was somewhere in the United States, right? Oh, maybe. I know that was there was. Oh gosh, there's a there's an Indian, a real Indian, not Native American, mm-hmm. um, an Indian. Maybe it's Chinese. I think it might be Chinese that's done that, because there was. Um, in Avatar The Last Airbender, the Western <clears throat> Air Temple, they built upside down under a mountain. Okay. Um, Wait, were you just talking about The Last Airbender when we were trying to talk about history? Maybe. Cameron. <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> I was these, making a point. Chris, I was these making are not a point. The same thing. I know. The point I was trying to make was those, those, that village was based off of another village. From real life. Okay. Well, I was I, giving I, a reference to what I was trying to talk about, and clearly I have to talk through Avatar to get to any real points I have to make. God, don't we and all the listeners know it. But, uh, <clears throat> yes, the cliff dwellings of the Mesa Verde National Park, North American continent, the Pueblo people. Uh, yeah. So they were built around, like, the 1270s okay. mm-hmm. in present New Mexico and Arizona. Okay. So... Now, there might be more of these, like, down in South America, too. But I just, like, I don't think they're any related at all. Because why would they? So if this, this art exhibit is coming from, the like, the, the actual Native American tribes, which the, um, I was saying, like. See, that's, I mean, like, it makes guy? sense. It makes sense when you look at the photo of what I'm trying to talk about. Yeah, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's Avatar. I don't care. Fuck you. <laughs> um, I'm done with this. I'm tired <laughs> of this bullying. You don't hear me making fun of James Bond. But I would make fun of James Bond along with you. Shut up. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll go put on my romper. <laughs> Men talk. Yeah, which I got a lot of use of out of this weekend. I'm sure you did. Yeah. Oh, so comfy. Anywho. Um, 
So yeah, because if they had to take the staff from its original home and they put it on a train to go to Arkansas Metropolis, they, why would the League of Assassins steal it and then take it back to where it came from? So I don't think they're related. No. So I guess that was just like, well, we already have like a, a little bit of that theme going on, that visual style, so just bring it right back around. And actually, no, I think that must have been somewhere in, like, in South America, actually, because Talia mentions how Roz is part of the um, Spanish conquistadors that first conquered that place and stole their wealth, and that's what like started the beginning of his massive fortune. Okay. So if they were Spanish conquistadors, I, mean, I guess that could technically no be... No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. No one! Much less... Batman. Batman. <laughs> The one thing he doesn't have a contingency plan for. It's true. <laughs> but, yeah, so I guess that wasn't, I guess they're not connected, which is just weird that they would have both those things. Because I thought, okay, they're bringing it back to, like, the, the yeah, exactly back home, and they are have to be there for this whole thing to work. But no, they just had a whole bunch of machinery stuffed in there, which that must have been expensive and challenging to get that shit in there. You had to, like, bring it down a cliff face. Yeah, Ubu's up for it, though. That's true. Ubu will do anything. Yeah. Yeah. He's got no real scruples. As long as you just like, give him a pat on the head, he'll do whatever you want. <gasps> good boy, Ubu. Good boy. It's a good boy. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Like, that that whole thing was just, like, weird. And there's a lot of stuff that they just didn't bother to, like, think through the details of. Like, so I knew this was obviously going to involve Batman. Like, I knew it. Like, the Demon Reborn, you know, it's obviously going to be a Raw's episode. Right. What I was not expecting, though, is when Superman is trying to stop the train, the Batmobile is going to ride up and help. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That was cool. My second thought was immediately, though, Wait, why the hell is he in the Batmobile and why is he on the train tracks? Why wouldn't he be in the Batwing if he came all the way out to Metropolis? Because mm -hmm. he has the Batwing later. Yeah. So he took both? Y y yeah. Now, we've seen before that he can put the Batwing inside of a Wayne Tech plane to get it out someplace, because he got it out at the end of World's Finest. Mm -hmm. Does that also have room for the Batmobile, too? I'm sure. That's just a bit of overkill, though. But, I mean, what's Batman without being overkill? Well, this is true, because I also love... <laughs> so he's been tracking the League for two weeks, and as he's explaining this, he takes a little bat tracker off a guy's pant leg. Was he... Was that just on that guy's leg? As apparently they only have weeks? one so that was the thing he put it on two weeks ago but then laundry day oh, shit. wasn't for two weeks because they have so many of the same uniform yeah he had he had to wait for him to wash that pair to put him back on because uh -huh. he happened to pick like the cleanest of the henchmen um and we all know that yeah. batman's trackers are waterproof yeah but they will not transmit through a maytag it's true yeah yeah he wanted to stick it on Dirty Dirty Mike on the left, but uh -huh. he missed him. God damn it. Because Dirty Mike wears the same pair of pants every day. Yeah. Man, Dirty Mike, have they got a fire at Dirty Mike at this point? They should. Yeah. But I mean, it, Dirty Mike isn't the one that got him caught by Batman. That's true. Do you think Dirty Mike was one of the guys flying around on like the little weird hover skiffs that got like thrown into a barrel of oil? Oh, And for he got sure. even dirtier? He's yeah. like, hey, guys. <laughs> He's like, no, he he doesn't he doesn't acknowledge it. He just kind of like he he gets up from the oil. He's like sniffs under his arms, like I can wear this tomorrow. No, I'm good. I'll turn it inside out. Yeah, It'll be fine. I can get a few more days out of this. God, God damn it, Dirty Mike. Yeah, just slow Batman down. They wouldn't have had to do the whole cross country trip thing. It's true. Batman would have found him sooner. Shut that whole shit down. So much faster. God damn it, fucking Dirty Mike. A clean Jerry over here, <laughs> really making it hard for Batman. <laughs> God, he would be a Jerry. He would be a Jerry. <laughs> but so there, that whole thing didn't make any sense to me. I also love man, Lois was actually being really obnoxious. Lois episode. is a bitch in this Lois episode. Is a, yeah, she's not great in this episode. She just another walks day, in. another Pulitzer. Yeah, what? Like, so one. Okay, we're gonna take this very literally here. Either she legitimately won a Pulitzer, in which case she was reading about it in the newspaper. Do you think she wrote that article? She, I think that's it. I think what it really was is she was just so impressed with her own work. She just looked at it and goes, oh, yeah, this is Pulitzer worthy. Yeah. Toss that shit aside. Oh, I like to think more that it's the report about her winning the Pulitzer that she wrote she about. She wrote her. about herself. Yes. <laughs> you know she did. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and then she won't get nominated for a Pulitzer for the article about her own Pulitzer, and she'll be so mad about it. Yeah. And she'll come home that day and be like, God damn it, not another Pulitzer. Right. Man. Uh, it's fine because then Batman shows up and really upsets her. So why didn't Talia kidnap Lois? 
why did why did she have to knock her out to steal her clothes when she was already in the She's closet? In the closet, yeah. So I mean, I guess to prevent Lois from going outside, because I mean, if Lois is outside her front door, she'll get in trouble. So we get in some sort of danger. Actually, she doesn't even have to leave her apartment. She'll just get in danger no matter what she does. Yeah. So I think Talia had to take her off, like the game board, the board, the playing mm-hmm. field. Yes. The thing. The insert yes. your metaphor here. Mm-hmm. Had to get her off of that, lest Lois just stumble her own way into trouble. Right. So that's one thing I'll give them credit for for making sense. Well, what didn't make sense to me, which I found hilarious, mm-hmm. was right after Lois does the another Pulitzer speech. There, uh, Clark is watching the news. He's mm-hmm. like, an un- unidentifiable woman. It's like, <gasps> newscasters, <laughs> you have like three people to pick from. <laughs> well, I can see from here it's not Angela Chen. Yep. So it's not Lana. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just let's just assume it's Lois. Yeah. Superman will be here in a minute. So everyone, get your cameras ready. God, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so also, what this means that the League of Assassins. Do they? Why would they pick Lois? Do they just? Do they just know Superman constantly saves her, and that's why they would go I feel after like everyone her? Everyone just knows. Everyone knows this at this point. Yeah. Do you think that the league then knows that Superman is Clark Kent? Probably. I feel like they would keep tabs on that sort of shit. Probably. Yeah. I mean, if they can know who Bruce Wayne Batman is, mm-hmm. that's a, I feel like a harder secret to deduce than Superman Clark Kent. Yeah. Unless you're everyone on the goddamn planet. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> Raj just takes his glasses off and like, are you? Really, no one. No yeah. one sees this. No, no, no one calls up calls up Bruce. Like, you, you've seen this, yeah. right? <laughs> I know you're a detective, but you already knew this, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. It's super obvious. <laughs> it's like I, I had to make sure I'm not crazy yeah. here. But that's just. I mean, Roz has spent so many years watching people try and disguise himself with glasses. Yeah, he knew. Mm-hmm. He just knew all along. Yeah. Now, one thing I will give this. But I guess they didn't know he had super strength. Superman or Clark? Yeah. Superman. They know he had super strength. They sucked the strength out of him. Well, no, at the beginning, they did something where they like someone like tried to hit him on the back of the head. Oh, that's true. He he's breaking up the train, like the the thieves from the train, and they're just trying to hit him with nunchucks. That was it. Yeah, they're trying to choke him out with nunchucks. Nun nunchucks. Nunchucks. <laughs> no, they want him to go numb. They're numb. nunchucks. <laughs> no, come that's, on, Chris. <laughs> that's the other henchman, Nunchuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who just has like. Just constantly getting yeah he's got a lot of nerve damage from getting beat up all the time he can't feel a damn thing anymore yeah <laughs> um yeah nunchucks <laughs> yeah but i guess that was a henchman like henchmen don't know anything i guess they don't know their shit even the league of assassins They're, i think they've had so many of their people get blown up at secret bases in the middle of the egyptian desert that they their recruiting standards have had to drop down yeah as a result it's a pretty low pool for henchmen right now yeah it's just mm, they're, they're going through a period of struggle right now their main guy is about to die. Yeah. So now I will give this episode credit for one scene I did actually really like. And it was the scene where Batman shows up in Lois's apartment. Oh, yeah. Where they have that little heart to heart. Yeah. Because one, Batman uses his normal voice. Mm-hmm. Which I always like when he does that. He and, do- she, and she caught it immediately. Yeah. And I like that they, they have like an actual real conversation there for a quick second. And that... He he's genuinely apologetic. He's like, I'm sorry. This is how we had to like see each other again. Yeah. Like Bruce never apologizes for anything. No. So that that does go to show that he you know did genuinely like her, um you know and had a bit of a soft spot for her. But then I also love that when she starts like respond back in a full on heart to heart, he's just gone. Just once I want him to stay. Yeah. I want I want the person like have Gordon be there. And just, like, start talking about really deep shit. And he's like, I know you're gone, so I'm just, I am just need to talk it out for a second. It's like, life at home isn't going great. Like, Barbara's not talking to me right now. Uh, it's like, I find myself drinking a lot more. And yeah, he turns around and Batman, Batman just, like, pats him on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jim. I'm sorry, Jim. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought you were gone. <laughs> this, this is the time you want to stay? <laughs> God damn it, Batman. Get out of here. <laughs> I should arrest you for this. Gotta get to turn the signal off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. That like that scene was kind of decent. The airport fight was super stupid and generic. Yep. Um wait, why do I have a note here? Oh, couldn't have done that sooner. Why does Superman wait so long to use his heat vision to break himself out? I have the same question for the next episode. Oh yeah. No, that's a yeah. 
But yeah, generics parasucking device. Um, oh, okay. Rage goes Bane. Yeah, Rage. Yeah, I didn't like that either. I guess yeah. I, I liked that he did go try and save Talia because in a previous episode he didn't do that. He yeah, let, he was gonna let her die. Well, it was instead. it was the same ultimatum that Talia gave at the beginning: is you can you can stop me or save the train. Oh, that's uh, true. So it yeah. ends with Superman doing the same thing: you can kill me or save your daughter. Oh, he learns something sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it just didn't. I don't know. It felt. The whole thing just I felt... that was also a very Batman move of him. Yeah. Like, which I guess, you know... They, they, I mean, they do talk about how, like, there's a bit... Something to that partnership. They can learn something from each other. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know. I feel like this was too early for them to be really working on Justice League. Right. Because we've been 98, so they would have been, like, working on um, Batman Beyond and probably even before Static. But I like that idea of, like, that little hint of like, oh yeah, there's like something to this teamwork sort of thing. Yeah, and I also love too that when they fly off in their separate ways, we get a hint of the uh, the n- Batman Superman intro. Oh, the I one, missed that. The one we never get on the DVDs. Yeah, we get a little bit of that, which I thought was kind of cool. That's cool. I missed that. Um, but other than that, it's just you know, this is a totally skippable episode, which is it's kind of a bummer. Cause I feel like every other Batman Superman crossover has been pretty good. Most of the Raw's episodes have been pretty good. Yeah. This this one felt very Superman, though, which mm-hmm. I think is part of the reason it didn't quite work. There was one moment where I had an Incredibles flashback where... The train? No. Um, where Batman was running to Talia for something. I think Roz had just, like, hit her, like, had just slapped her across the room. Oh, okay. And Batman was running after her, and Roz grabs his cape. And oh. in my head, it just immediately went, no capes. No capes. No capes. Edna, Edna, this is this is your downfall, Batman. Edna would not approve of this. I think, oh, do you think, no, Edna, Edna would not be scared of Batman. No. No. She's scared of nobody. Right. She'd walk right up to him and just start slapping him across the face. Mm-hmm. I feel like her and Alfred would be great friends. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, no, Alfred, like, if Bruce were in the room, Alfred would act like he was offended by how just, like, a brash... She was, and as soon as Bruce is gone, it's like high just, five. They'd chum it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'd be good pals. Those, I don't know if you saw, um, because I don't. Never mind. There was an, an awesome Incredibles thing happening at the Pixar office today. I was very upset I couldn't be what there. What was the awesome Pixar thing? Um, it was like a big influencer, uh, like promo for for the movie. Oh, okay. So they were broken up into teams, and they had like, you you basically had a a different level for a different challenge for each character Mm -hmm. so the one that i the one thing that i've always wanted to do is run on water and absorb the the big inflatable balls oh okay because they had to do that oh kind of like in the classic film the avengers starring ray fiance uma thurman and sean connery avengers they were avengers Avengers. but they were in (laughs) the british tv to film adaptation of the show avengers like 1997 okay didn't didn't see that one yeah sorry it's terrible. I was going it's, for more of It's the... notoriously bad. Oh, was it? I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, at one point, Sean Connery, as the villain of the piece, has a weather machine who may or may not be Uma Thurman's character's father, has a business conference, and everyone is wearing multicolored teddy bear um, like costumes. Amazing. Like um, You already sold you're me. Like full-on furries, but yeah. like well before that was ever even known. You, you, you can stop talking. You've already sold me on this movie. Yeah. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. No, I was going more for the Rocket Power reference. Uh, Race Across Rocket New Zealand Power. was their I remember first the, I remember movie. that, the movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I don't remember there being... Their first challenge was Zorbing, where they had to run down the hill, and I think it ended with them in water. Did it? I, I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong about Wasn't, that. Didn't have Tito have a whole thing in there where he was in love with Vegemite? Yeah. <laughs> but he kept it kept getting stolen. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can never actually get his Vegemite. The swooping birds. Oh, poor Tito. I know. Just wants his Vegemite. He finally got it at the end. It's all right. Aw. Well, that sounds like a really fun thing that happened at Pixar that neither of us would get invited to. I know. Soon. Aww. Someday. Someday. Yeah, you're far more likely to end up as a Disney influencer <laughs> than I am. So <laughs> I'm no one's influencer. <laughs> Um. Yeah, kind of a kind of a forgettable episode, though. I have to admit, mm-hmm. didn't really love it. Now, what did you think about Girls' Night Out? Uh, it was great. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Um, I think you might have oversold it for me. I probably did a little bit. Yeah, I will admit when I watch it again this time, it could have been because I watched it like nine o'clock last night when I was dead fucking tired. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Old man. I don't know if I told you, but I spent all weekend drunk in the sun, and so I got home on Sunday, and I was just, I was, mm-hmm. I was, I was a little bit tired. A little I, bit tired, a little bit sunburned. Not hung over at that point, luckily. That's I, good. I got past that. But good, good like, for you. Know you. I just want to go to bed. I'm like, oh, crap, now I have to watch these cartoons. I mean, it's, a, it's a struggle. I get it. It was. Struggle's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm still a little sunburned. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> You're bright pink. <laughs> but it's fine. The rest of me got some color, too. Mm, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough. Um, the girls night out. It was fun. Yeah. It was. How did you feel about uh, Harley just being the punchline of the entire episode? You know, I actually. Those are some of my favorite moments. I had kind of fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I really love when she's got the mallet and she's just constantly banging on the door. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, bless her heart. She tries, and then she does it again with the ATM. It. I don't know. I think because you have so many characters i feel like you do need to mix it up a little bit and i thought that leaning in on her to be the comic relief was good because she that character is always really really funny yeah like she is able to earn some really sincere comedic beats Mm -hmm. and but i mean she also she always does display like a little bit she's still very self-possessed especially when she's with ivy compared to the joker yeah like i just want i wanted her to have a redeeming moment at the end but she gets knocked out immediately. Yeah. I don't know what it would be, but just like, even if it was just like, you see Ivy go down, you see uh, Livewire go down, even if it was just her being the last one standing, mm-hmm. and it's like pulls her mallet out again, and she's like, now let's see who's laughing. And like, she's about to hit Livewire with the hammer. Yeah. And then, you know, Batman, Batgirl is just like, Harley, what are you doing? She's like, nothing. That would have been kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've heard like never really like live wire and go for it. But I don't know, I guess she she is kind of the butt of the joke, but because it's Harley, you feel like a little of a bit's a bit of an act. You feel like she's putting herself in the position of being the butt of the joke. Yeah. More than like actually being genuinely that dumb. Mm-hmm. You kinda of know that she's like knows it's not gonna work. She just does it anyways. Yeah. She even says, like, yeah, I'm crazy. Like, are you crazy? It's like, well, yeah. Yeah. Of course I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I will give you that, of though. Of course I am. They could, maybe could do something there. And um, we talked about before, like, with Livewire, that I think she as a character is oftentimes better than the episodes that she's in. And mm-hmm. I think it helps here that she had other characters to bounce off of. But I liked her a lot in this one. Yeah. And I think it, it does show that she is, I mean, like Poison Ivy, she's a villain that did all this on her own. Yeah. Uh, Harley came up as a hench- as a henchman, mm-hmm. so there is kind of that struggle of like of that power dynamic, which is which is cool to see. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I just love Poison Ivy. Mm-hmm. She's great, and they really do have a great chemistry, the two of them, Harley and Ivy. Yeah, and it, I just like the the general the general idea of this is really fun, and obviously we see shades of this come back around in like Justice League and Justice League Unlimited a little bit, like. Sadly, not as much as we probably should have. Like, obviously, this show still stays very male-dominated. Yeah. Um, but I do I do really like this one mm-hmm. a lot. You see, I see a lot of, like, the early workings of Black Canary and... Um, Huntress? Huntress, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it, that dynamic yeah. was, was very pre- prevalent in here. I think what I like... I think <clears> for <throat> me, rewatching this again, I think some of the plot elements don't work, and some of the beats in general are a little forced but i will say that the character work all the way through is really good and you really buy that barbara and kara would like develop a fast friendship like that oh yeah because they are both like the light-hearted fun members of the group Mm -hmm. but still very capable of independence yeah exactly um but it was cool to see barbara driving around in the batmobile yeah i love that idea of like Batman's out of town, and so she just... She's just joyriding. She does all of it. Mm -hmm. Plus, this is one of my favorite moments in all of the new Batman adventures when Livewire is zapping the Batmobile, and Barbara uses that really sweet escape hang glider where, like, the roof launches off Mm -hmm. and then the bat wings fly out. I always wanted, like, that as a toy to be a thing, like the Batmobile that had, like, the little, like, bat glider built into it. Mm -hmm. Plus, I didn't realize this at the time. I, I saw this in trivia, but... Uh, in that moment, they play some of her theme from the BTOS episodes. Oh, I didn't know. So that. I knew I recognized it, but I couldn't remember mm-hmm. where from, and I forgot they didn't. They never brought that theme back in this show until that moment. I was like, oh, that's yeah. that's fun. There was there was a bit, there was a piece of trivia that I'm sure you saw too that I wasn't 
I wanted to ask if it was real, because you would remember this better than I would. Mm -hmm. They said this is the first time... Every crossover episode has been Mm. Batman in another episode. This is the first time it was someone else in a Batman episode. I think that... Is that real? I think that is right. Because when... Ro- oh, I guess, yeah, Roxy Rocket was in Superman, because that was the only one that I couldn't remember. Well, yeah, so Nighttime is technically a Superman episode. Is that when he puts on the bat suit? Yes. Okay. That's a Superman episode. Right, I remember um, that. And I think technically World's Finest... Those were all Superman was episodes. ...was technically Superman episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are the... I think those are the only Batman and Superman crossovers? Yes. Hang on. I'm going to look at the list real quick. Look like I keep it just sitting here. Okay. World's Finest. Um, had a fade prototype, cold comfort, heavy metal, you scratched my back, work for the apocalypse, growing pains. Um, yeah, Nighttime is, yeah, because we, we talked about that with Nighttime where you felt like there was an evolution of the characters where this was like the first time they met each other and... Like Batman makes a comment like we're not really friends. In that episode, you feel like that Batman now regards him a little more warmly because he took he care of Robin. He said yeah. he did everything like that. Um, yeah, this is mm-hmm. holy shit. Yeah, you're right. That's kind of cool, but it also, also shows that like also uh, James and Ted. Make sure we're right on that. Can you back us up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's giving you double <clears throat> check. Um, I, I really appreciated the license plate on the, on Ivy's car. Rosebud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. From that movie, uh, Bill and Ted. Wait, I can't tell if you're fucking with me. I'm you're fucking gen- with you. I, okay. I, I know Citizen Kane. <laughs> now, hang on. Hmm. Have you ever seen Citizen Kane? I've seen the Simpsons episode, the parody Citizen Kane. Came out in 1938, Chris. I'm not going to watch a 1938 film. <laughs> what? What? But so many great movies came from back then. You haven't seen Casablanca. I have right? seen Casablanca. Okay, good. I was about yeah. To... <sighs> yeah, I have seen Casablanca. I, I was about ready to beat you with the microphone, <laughs> with both microphones, and uh, record all of it. <laughs> though, there was the fun fact of the old movies. Uh, I I might have told you about this. Sorry, before. the old movies. The the oldies, the old the, them old films, oh, them classics. It was, it's a. Uh, um, not Alice in Wonderland, uh, Wizard of Oz comment, which I, I just learned like in the past year, which I always thought was cool. What? Was uh, the the scene when she opens the door to color. It starts off as sepia, and then she opens the yes. door, and you see the color. I'm familiar. Yes. Um, so that I didn't realize that whole scene was filmed in color, but to make it look sepia, they painted the set that color, and they <gasps> painted her back that. They, it was a stunt double. Yeah, was they painted her to look sepia. So then, when the camera moves, it goes in to see the color. Sorry, I hit the mic. It goes in to see the color. The stunt double walks out, and then the real actress walks in. So it's all in color then. Okay, that is actually really, really right. Isn't that cool. awesome? I guess yeah. I mean, I guess if the camera's moving, they would have to, because otherwise it'd be really hard to do a composite shot back then. Mm-hmm. Okay, isn't that? So fascinating. That's actually really amazing. Yeah. You've seen The Wizard of Oz, right? What? You've seen The Wizard of Oz. Of course right? I've seen The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I don't know, Cameron. Yes, I've seen The Wizard of Oz. I've seen a handful of uh, Charlie went Chaplin films. You to go see? <laughs> I needed time in the theater, Chris. It's Life my meditation place. Twice? In yes. one week. Yes. It's my happy place, Chris. Sometimes I just need to go and mellow out somewhere. Forgive me for questioning your choices. One of my favorite movies is The Cameraman by Buster Keaton. All right. You know, I actually haven't seen that. Wow. Wow. Shoes on the other foot now, isn't it? <laughs> but I have seen The General, which I did love. That was great. Uh, was that, that's Buster. It's The Train. It's The Train one, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I think he one. might be a Confederate soldier, though, which isn't great. Um, sign of the times. <laughs> Any, anywho. <laughs> um, but yes, I did love that Ivy's car is called Rosebud. Mm-hmm. Good double meaning thrown in there. Yes. Um, one of the other things that I really loved too was when Barbara and Kara go back out to try and find Livewire. Batgirl's like like sitting on top of him, flying around. I love that. Could you imagine Bruce ever doing that? That's there's <laughs> there's a, a single panel comic, and it's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just 
Superman in the Superman pose and Batman sitting like cross legged, arms crossed. Uh, and oh, it's just I've like, seen that don't yeah. talk. <laughs> oh, hang on. Oh, wait. What am I? Oh, this I might get very interesting results from the phrase Batman riding Superman. Nah, I'm um, fine. Not with your search history. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, right. So it's not a... Wait, is it an actual... It's not a comic... Com- it's like an actual comic panel, but it's like a little cartoon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a fan comic. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. No, that is fantastic. Because I also, in high school, I drew... Because I saw that in high school, and I drew my own version where it was Batman surfing on Superman. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> um, also, how many images into the search do you think it took it for it to go gay? Oh, seven. Uh, no, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I was close. And on uh, on the twelfth, oh, this is fantastic. This is the twelfth one, and it's uh, it's Batman and That's Superman from the Batman. Most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I'll put this up on uh, our Instagram. Oh fuck, I forgot to put my bed sheets on there. Did you order them? No, but I also oh. haven't even posted last week's episode art because I haven't had any time. I know. <laughs> you could do it. I was busy. I was busy in the void. I was busy in the alternate dimension. I was busy at work, and I actually don't have time to do other work when oh, I'm at work. I was working? Yeah, but you work from home. Yeah. You watch movies at work, Cameron. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't... That doesn't mean I'm not also working. But you could have like five minutes. I don't respond to my parents. I mute my parents when I'm at work because it's too distracting because I don't right. have time to respond to them. All right, fine. Yeah. Get yeah. off my back, Mom. You can do it. Well, actually, no, I'm trying to ride you around like Superman. No. <laughs> um, so there was a moment. On this one, they're kissing. <laughs> God damn it. There was a moment while they're in the Iceberg Lounge. So the um, Ivy Livewire and Harley go to Iceberg Lounge to celebrate getting away with it. I, love, with it. I love they went to the Iceberg Lounge. Yeah. I love every time they go there. Uh, so they're all kind of getting angry at each other. They're all kind of at each other's wits ends. Um, and Livewire and Ivy kind of getting a little tiff. Mm-hmm. Who do you think would win that fight? Ooh. Because Ooh. from my, my years and years of playing Pokemon, I have learned electricity does not have type advantage over grass. It actually mm-hmm. has type other thing. Well, mm, but that does make sense to me because I feel like lightning lights things on fire mm-hmm. so wouldn't live wire just zap poison ivy and light because that's what happens later like yeah yeah her like her lightning goes crazy and lights the topiaries on fire but that was like that was her like going crazy with her power i don't think she would be able to do that with her normal strength I think, I think that was so. her getting short short circuited i think she could do it okay yeah i, I think ivy would, no i think i think live wire would win i think Ivy is more cunning and capable, mm-hmm. but I think nature would win out on that one, and I think Livewire would win. Okay. But we've already seen, though, that Livewire is, in fact, bested by Harley, left and right. Yes. Actually, this is kind of a perfect rock, paper, scissors scenario. In what, sa- like, what sense? Everyone beats everyone in one direction. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when, did, when does Harley beat Livewire? All the time, because she like keeps spraying her down with water. Oh, like, in that sense, yeah. Harley yeah. is so hapless; she takes out Livewire, and I Livewire will be able to take out Poison Ivy, and mm-hmm. Poison Ivy would easily be able to take down Harley. She just chooses not to. Yeah, that is a perfect rock paper scissors scenario right there. Mm-hmm. Do you think Harley could take out Ivy? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, because I think, I think at the end of the day, Ivy is a little bit more ruthless. I think it's genuinely true that. Harley is probably the only other human that Ivy has ever genuinely cared for. Mm-hmm. But I think if it really came down to it, she would turn on Harley. If okay. It, if, if it was like a life and death fight situation, I think she would. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what the most recent movie was. That's which true. Comic Con. Yeah. Was that, which one, what was that called again? Batman or Harley Quinn. That one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can revisit that at some point. Yes, we should. I know. Yeah, we'll get to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what else I want to say. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, why didn't... So the final scene is Poison Ivy using her uh, plant sculptures to fight against... Her topiaries. Ta- ta- that's the word, thank you. The topiaries to fight against Supergirl. Should she be bested by plants? Probably not. Right. I guess the implication is because the topiary is shaped like an elephant, it has the strength of one. I guess so. Mm. 
But then it comes to the, the question before of heat vision. Why don't they ever use their goddamn heat vision? Do they forget? They must. They have so many powers. They must. Okay, hang on. Let me let me see if I can play a little bit devil's advocate here. Does she have heat vision? I don't remember her using she it does. yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she has the same powers as Clark. I know, but it took Clark... I mean, via Smallville, it took Clark a while to get a handle on all of his powers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he had to get a boner for he could have heat vision. That's right. Yeah. Hot teacher. Hot for teacher. Oh, hot for Lana. Was it Lana? For, I thought it was the teacher first. That's what sparked the power, because he, he had a substitute. Is that what it was? I'm pretty sure. I just remember in that episode when he's like, he has to practice, and he's like, yeah. Jonathan, I, like, Dad, I, I did this I, I with, without, without <laughs> you here. But also, I remember because uh, they played the Junkie XL cover of Little Us Conversation from Elvis. I, I don't remember that part. Yeah. I always like, love that song. It took me years to realize that JXL was also Junkie XL, who's now like a full-fledged composer, which is kind of cool. <laughs> But yeah, I always remember that episode. I thought that was kind of fun. But no, she has laser vision, he vision. Okay, I, I I'll give them this credit. I'm going to say that they are so used to living in paper towns with paper people. No, don't get to pull the quote yet. No, no, no. Don't get to pull the quote no, yet. No, no, no. They're so used to that that I think that they sometimes forget how capable they are. I think they're always pulling their punches. Mm hmm. Uh, it was Lex's girlfriend. That he saw. Oh wait, do you have, let me see. Who was it? Lex's girlfriend. Wait, who is? Who that? I also think was the teacher. I think that was the step te- uh, substitute teacher. Oh, I think. Teacher. Oh, it was the substitute teacher. Yeah, hot new biology teacher Desiree Atkins, played by Krista Allen, arrives in Smallville. Mm-hmm. God, what a great, not great show. I know. Oh, right. My God, what 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 beautiful trash. Yeah, that show was. Oh, that's how I describe most of my life. <laughs> Yeah, it fits. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, again, the story beats are kind of weird sometimes. Oh, but then the ending. Hold on. We always bring, or at least I always love to bring up how the artists and writers love just the most gruesome deaths for any non-living creature. Oh, like the topiaries? The topiaries, not just, like, burning, but... Like thrashing. M- yeah, yeah, melting and disintegrating yeah. in front of Poison Ivy, which is so cruel of the animators. They, like that was dark to yeah. see that like the tiger topiary pretty much like see every step of it turning to dust. Yeah. It, it, it was pretty dark. I will, I will give it that. Yeah. They, they do love that. They thing. love they, they it. They have to get it out somewhere. Yeah. Cause I can't anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just looking at like any other little bits of interesting trivia on this one. I mean, we were talking about the fact that like we kind of did these out of order because Supergirl mentions Barbara. Mm hmm. And a letter to Martha, just so casually. Yes. Um, ba, 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 ba. But otherwise, yeah. It all basically, it all works. It's good. I like this. Yeah, it was a fun, I liked... Because um, you hadn't seen this before, right? I had not. Okay, yeah. The one joke that I wish they had done, which they kind of did a different way, was when Harley's, uh, when they're going into the mall and Harley's trying to use her hammer to break the door. Uh-huh. It's, an, it's an electric door. Yeah. I would have loved for Livewire to just open the door and Harley fall through. That like, would have been, been a better comedy beat. That would have been good. Instead yeah. of her just like shoving her out of the way and blowing up the door. Yeah. It's like, it's an electric door. Just open it. Dude, sh- yeah. It's so much less power. You clearly have a battery. Yeah. Um, okay, here. I got a, I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. Good. I have a question for you as well. Do you think Harley as a character is more interesting when she's not with the Joker? Let's talk specifically DCAU. Uh, yes, because when she's with the Joker, her only motive is to impress the Joker. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he's not in the episode, she has more character development. She's more she, agency. Yes. She uh, has stories that aren't just revolved around him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I generally tend to like her more in her... A one-off or Ivy episodes. Yeah, I think it's just a more interesting pairing. Absolutely. Mm. What was your question for me? I was. I wanted to compare. Because what time is it? We've an hour in. Yeah, we got time. I wanted to compare what you thought of this episode compared to X Men Evolution's All Woman episode. 
Wait, what um, was X-Men Evolution? Okay. It was me of... called Walk on the Wild Side, and it's when Jean Grey, oh. Magma, Boom Boom, Tabitha, yeah. uh, Shadow Cat, and Rogue start kind of the all-women's X-Men vigilante yes. group. And then isn't it like Scott and the other guys are trying to like, figure out what they're up to? Yeah. I do vaguely recall that episode. Uh, because they uh, they feel like they're on the back line all the time. Yeah. And yeah, so Tabitha recruits all the girls to start their own team. And they're riding... They only, the scene I remember oh. most vividly is when they're riding around in the Jeep. Uh, just like in the all black. Yeah. I, oh, I do love that show. Mm-hmm. And I love this episode. Oh. Oh my God! Yes, like, like the whole biker gang look going on. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah! Oh, that's so fantastic. Um, oh, the Bayville Sirens. That's yeah. That's what they're called. That's right. Mm. Oh my God! And look, it has that fantastic, that fantastic montage moment where they all bust out of the. Oh yeah. The dressing oh, room. Oh yeah. Um, it hits all the cliches. It hits all the cliches. I think okay. Not having seen this episode or just the show in general in a number of years, mm-hmm. I think. I'm going to give it to Girls Night Out. Okay. Because, okay, so it's one of those weird things. I think it's worth acknowledging that in X-Men Evolution, they were actually addressing the fact that the girls always feel like they're on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And this touches on that a little bit with the way like Bullock's like, oh, where's the bat? But for the most part, this is really just about Batgirl and Supergirl being effective crime fighters against three villains who especially team up together are very capable mm-hmm. it's each of them on their own are very capable it's everyone is basically like playing at peak performance maybe a little bit less on harley's side <laughs> she's goofing around yeah but it's more like just about like this is just a normal like team up villain combined episode that doesn't really isn't about the fact right that this sort of thing doesn't often happen. It just kind of lets it happen. Mm-hmm. So I guess credit to X-Men Evolution for acknowledging that it sort of needs to be acknowledged, but I think this is better because it doesn't have to acknowledge it, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I don't know. I th- I think they're both are, I think they're both different enough mm-hmm. because I'm trying to remember the villain of that episode, of the X-Men episode. Was it Mystique? Episode. I mean, the Mystique is always the villain. Yeah. Um... But I can't remember. I mean, I remember it turning dark uh, or just like them turning kind of bad because Tabitha, who's always kind of the wild child, she like she kind of got power hungry or not. power. She had the power go to her head. Yeah. And she like just started blowing up things at random, which they called a, it caused a little tiff in the group. Um, I'm trying to look up the what goes wrong here. It's called On the Wild Side, I believe. Uh, walk on the wild side. Yeah, I think Tabitha just goes a little hot headed. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they go for like a game of like car thieves. Oh, that's right. So even that's like you're talking about some of the most powerful mutants mm-hmm. in the X Men. I mean, Gene obviously is not yeah. less so in that show, but like one of the most powerful mutants possible. And Shadowcat actually too, her powers are mm-hmm. incredibly useful. Oh, because the B story is them teaching Magma how to control her powers. That's why I like the episode, because I love Magma. I like Magma. She's adorable. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that's maybe part of it. It's like, these are some of the most powerful mutants in the whole arsenal, and they go up against a gang of non-powered car thieves. Yeah. It's not quite as impressive. Yeah. I'll probably give it to this episode. Yeah. That being said, man, I really gotta go back and rewatch X-Men. It's great. I think it's all on Hulu still. <gasps> oh, God, I love that show so much. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And are there any other... Were there any Justice League episodes where it was all female? Um, well, I mean, obviously, JLU did, like, the, uh, the Underground Fighting Ring one. That's true. With Black Canary. I think it was Black Canary, Huntress. Um, Fire and... and um, no. Um, um, a roulette was the villain of that. Yes. She runs the Underground Ring. Well, it was the two... Um, this might have been Young Justice. No, it hadn't have been Young Justice. It was... Um, the Brazilian girl. Oh, who, Fire and Ice? That, yeah, okay, I thought that's where, they, yeah. that's where their names were. Were they in that episode? Were they somewhere else? I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. I think for like a minute. Okay, I don't, I don't quite remember everything that happened in that one. Um, but I mean, so that that episode mm-hmm. kind of touched the same sort of topic. I don't know about... Because it was a very similar episode, and I think it was... It must have been Brave and the Bold, where Roulette was the villain again, and it's... 
Wildcat entering the ring uh, because he's feeling left out. Or was this a Justice League episode? I mean, there's an episode. I think Wildcat was involved in that episode. I, the... I think there were two roulette episodes. There, there were definitely two roulette episodes because I remember the banter between uh, Black Canary and Roulette. Yeah. Being like, I wasn't expecting to see you again. Cause yeah, cause uh, Wildcat goes. He's part of the underground finding ring. I just can't remember if the Huntress Black Canary part of that plot was that episode or a different one. I or, think it was I'm a sure. different one because it was like the fighting vixens. Oh, because vixen obviously yeah, vixen yeah. was there too. Because mm-hmm. um, that's when they had all of the females, and then they brainwashed Captain Adam. I want to say they brainwashed one of the other leaguers to fight against Wildcat, because it was Wildcat against all the villains. Atomic Skull was in it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, that wasn't be, wouldn't be called Sirens, would that be called, like, Girl Fight? I can't remember. <laughs> oh, wait, fuck, is that the actual episode title? Grudge Match. Thank God it's not actually called Girl Fight. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Yes. Roulette is doing the Metahuman Brawl. Huntress, Black Canary, The Question is kind of hanging around in the background. Fire, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, Fire goes up against... Huntress. Black Canary. Black Canary. <laughs> and then... Oh, I think there's, like... Huntress, Huntress fights Vixen? Does the episode end with, like, the like the Rocky Three style ending of Black Canary and Huntress, like, fighting does. each other? I honestly think it does. I think it does, actually, yeah. I'm just like, okay. Huntress, Black Canary, Hot Girl... Oh, that's right. Cause, it. Yeah, because it's Hot Girl Wonder versus Vixen. Because that's when they're still fighting Tala. over. Uh, they're still fighting over Green Lantern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is such. A, I don't know if Just League ever did anything quite like it though, because you only ever had Wonder Woman and Hot Girl. Hot Girl. Mm-hmm. There might be something, but I don't remember. There what being was an the episode. other rule episode? Can you pull that up really quick? Um, yeah. I'm sure if you just click on her name, it'll say what other episode she was on. Um, I know how to navigate the internet. I'm sorry. Thank I you. mean, you're a little older, so I just had to make sure you understood what you were doing. Thank you. I mean, I can't <laughs> see. I can't see the computer. <laughs> Hang on, let me get close. Thank you. And now I'm bumping the microphones. Oh, God. Oh, God. Put me down. <laughs> uh, oh, I scroll past it. Hang on. <laughs> the Cat and the Canary and Grudge Match. Okay, so Cat and the Canary. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the Wildcat episode. episode. Okay, that, mm-hmm. okay, yes, yes, there was two. Yeah, so the grudge match is the second one then. Yeah. Then it totally has the Rocky Three ending. I think it does, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the eye of the tiger. The was that really the song at the end of Rocky Three? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've never seen Rocky Three. I'm sorry. I don't think I've, I think I actually have seen all of that one. I've seen one, five, and Creed. Okay. Because five is Rocky Balboa, right? Six. Or is that six? There actually was a Rocky Five that no one just ever talks about. Okay, so I've seen one, six, and seven. Okay, that's a fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, I, I I'm glad that this and, is and the I've seen all of the training montages. Well, of course, because you, you watch montage montages. I do. <laughs> but I also love that uh, the DC collectibles line. They did a, a a box set that was this episode. Oh, that's awesome. So it's Supergirl, Batgirl, Harley, Ivy, and Life. I need to get that one, actually. I really need to get that at some point. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, so cool. Um, but yeah, it's a good episode. I like it a lot. It was fun, yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. Again, I think the characters save it. Um, I think the characters are good enough that I forgive it for its weird little plot inconsistencies and holes. Yeah. So um, shall we move along to our bat plugs? Sure. What have you been plugging? Cameron. What have I been watching? I, I mentioned before, uh, I started Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, that's right. Because I heard it was getting canceled. And then the next day, I heard it was not getting canceled. So you stopped watching so I stopped watching. Yeah. <laughs> no need to try and save a show you didn't know you liked. Right. And it's very funny. I think it's very underrated. Yeah. Uh, the characters are great. I'm almost done. I'm like halfway down to season one. Um, And I feel like with sitcoms, since you understand the character tropes immediately, Mm -hmm. at least for me, I hate the characters by like the end of season two. Uh, And you keep watching. I do, because I hate myself more than anything. (laughs) Uh, Because that's how I feel like with Friends, halfway through binging Friends, like I hated every single one of them. Yeah, they just become extreme versions of their own archetypes. And then rewatching The Office, like every time Michael opens his mouth, I'm just like, I hate you. I hate you so much. Yeah. Um, But no, with this so far, like 
the characters feel unique and mm-hmm. fun. Um, and and yeah, I mean, there was an interview that I remember hearing a while ago that was like, it was a, a tough balance trying to keep it funny, but also keep like it in the cop world when the cop world isn't always great. Yeah. Um, so like they find an awesome balance between that. Mm-hmm. That's great. And the only episodes that I'd seen before this were all the Halloween episodes. Oh, okay. Which are amazing. They're so funny. Uh, and so, yeah, now I'm, now I'm just filling in, filling in those holes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, and that's all the good stuff that I watched. Were you, say you're, were you plugging those holes? No. No? No. You wouldn't say that? I wouldn't. No, I would say that. Okay, you can <laughs> say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I guess I'll, I'll plug the void just to, just to make you more angry. You're uh, plugging the void? Yeah. Plugging those holes? Plugging that void? Plugging that giant void. Uh, for the people who don't know... Dickle. The Void is a dickhole. <laughs> uh, the Void is a uh, hyper VR experience. <clears throat> there are three open right now. One in uh, Orlando, one in Anaheim, and one in Glendale. Are they all the same? Yes. At okay. the moment, they're all Star Wars themed. Okay. Um, but they said potentially in September, they're going to switch an overlay to something else. Okay. Uh, so when I say hyper VR... What Wait, I'm... actually, no, shut up. I don't want to hear anything about this. Because I want to go in completely cold and experience it. Okay. Yeah. Then shut your mouth, Cameron. That'll be it. <laughs> also, I don't want to look up details for The Void. And just type in their website. Uh, it's thevoid.com. I have like a half hour to record this or edit this before I go to bed. I already sang you the art. I did my part. That's true. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, what what do you have to plug? Uh, been watching, listening, reading too. I um, have been watching the new season of Archer. Have you? Oh, I Archer. Have. Sorry, I heard Arrow for some reason. No, that's why I sounded so much so more surprised. No. no, the new season of Archer. So this is Danger Island. So it's set, I think, like just a little bit post World War II. Okay. Um, and they're on like an island out in the Pacific, and it's just typical Archer fun. It's ridiculous. I I, I didn't love Dreamland that much. This seems a little more back to form in terms of it being kind of like a, a romp. Yeah. Um, but I also love it, too, because Ray, his iteration in this dream world is like the French chief of police on the island. Hmm. And he's completely modeled after Captain Rhino from Casablanca. Amazing. Yeah, to the point where his introductory line is one of uh, Louis's most famous quotes from that movie. Which one? The, when he walked... Because... Uh, Mallory, who runs the hotel that they live in, is arguing with a, a pissed off patron about not being willing to pay him out his winnings from the casino. It's like, well, it's an illegal casino. I'm going to tell the chief police. The chief police comes and is like, oh, I'm shutting this place down. Why? I'm shocked, shocked to find gambling in here. <laughs> God, I love it. Here are your winnings, sir. Oh, thank you. Great. Can we can just go watch Casablanca. No. Gonna... Damn it. It's like three hours, Chris. No, it's not. It's like just it's like it's a solid two hours. <laughs> it's not that long. And every single second of it is a masterpiece. You can go watch Seven Samurai instead. That is long, though. Yeah. Never three and a half that. hours. <gasps> How dare you? How dare you? What? I've seen it. I don't know. I just thought I'd throw <laughs> that back in your face. Um, <laughs> I just see it for a class. Oh, I guess that's go. different then. Yeah. I, I, If I'd actually gone to film school, I probably would have watched it at some point. Mm-hmm. Didn't. Oh, well. Oh. Um, so watching that, uh, I've been reading a book called The Sisters Brothers by Patrick DeWitt. Got my it. mom actually got it from me years ago. I'm like, I knew nothing about it. And I came to the point where I was ready for a new book. I'm like, I guess I'll give this a shot. And it's two brothers who are assassins back in the Gold Rush era. Okay. And so they're sent on a mission to track down this guy in San Francisco in the middle of the Gold Rush because he doesn't to piss off their boss. And there's not necessarily a lot of plot. Like, it takes them a long time to actually, like, get to the city and to start following along the path of this guy they're supposed to find. But everything leading up to that is very like atmospheric and has really great tone. It's more of like a mood piece and it's more of a character piece. Like the the struggle between the two brothers where like the primary character who's the like the less violent of the two is struggling with how much he really wants to be a part of all this stuff. And just there's a, lots of scenes with stuff that don't really affect the plot, but they just are really great about setting their dynamic and their conflict and just giving this whole kind of darkly funny but really creepy eerie vibe okay it's really really good interesting it kind of reminds me of um uh 
fuck, 11, 22, 63. I may mean, have gotten the date wrong, but the Stephen, oh, the Stephen yeah, King yeah, yeah. book about the, the time traveler going back in time to stop the Kennedy assassination. Mm-hmm. Obviously, no plot similarities really whatsoever, but in that same sense of like a story that doesn't have to be creepy that is injected with that sense of creepiness and almost genre shifts it as a result. So I've been reading that and I've been really liking it. I'm almost done. I have like, I like 50 pages or something like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and the last one I'm going to plug, this is going to plug before, but it's a specific episode. So I'm catching up on our good friends, the 12th level intellect, their podcast. Good friends. Can you say meeting. that one more time? Cause that was just garbled mess. <laughs> <laughs> our good friends. We don't actually know. Mm-hmm. We are good internet friends. Yes. Ted and James. Got it. Their podcast. Which is? The 12th level intellects. Got it. Right. Thank you. <laughs> I plugged it before. Plugging it again. Uh, listening to their episode 12. I'm way behind, guys. I apologize. But uh, so it's James and then Maddie Washburn, who does all of the DCA timeline stuff, talking about all the stuff that happens between Batman Beyond and Justice League. Okay. Reverse that for chronological purposes. There you go. Um, yeah, and it's really interesting. Like there, So there's stuff that I knew, like references to what happens with like the Return of the Joker, where that falls in the timeline and stuff. But it's an interesting uh, listen for people who are DCAU inclined, which, frankly, if you aren't, why the hell are you listening to this? That's right. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's also really good, too. So that's what I've been listening to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And uh, real quick, our brief, brief letter section. Oh, we have a letter? Yeah. I'll try to, I try to make sure that if we have any sort of correspondence, I want to talk about it at okay. the end. Uh, so Who's to- making fun of me this time? Um, no one actually. Oh, P- people are saying positive things about you, Cameron. Oh, stop, guys. I must correct them. Please, please must correct this them ego. very quickly. Uh, no, one was because we get like very few YouTube watchers. Like, we get like maybe six a week, and that's even if YouTube actually progresses smoothly and puts the episode up. One episode never made it on to the YouTube channel because it just got so fucked up, and I couldn't figure out how to solve it. That's all right. Um, but our last episode, Maddie made a comment. He's like. Your, I'm your one view on YouTube. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. You got one. And then the other one That's was... Where it um, starts. Yeah, right. Was uh, Gordon Wills, who wrote to us on Instagram and was saying that he's been catching up the last few days and uh, that after Cameron talked about you, you're Cameron. After Me? you, you talked about uh, um, Blackest Night. He like was really sold on Green Lantern, has been going in, like <gasps> checking out some Green Lantern comics, and he's uh, uh-huh. been reading up on like Kyle Rayner, too. And he might be his new favorite Green Lantern. <gasps> Yay. Yeah. Uh, I have influence. You have... Oh, oh. I have power. Oh, shit. He's actually an influencer. Oh, dear. A Thanos glove. Just, <laughs> the Infinity <laughs> Gauntlet just landed on my wrist. Wrong hand. Wrist. There we go. <laughs> um, and then he also I was saying... correct this world. <laughs> Gordon was also saying that he was uh, listening to an old episode of Fat Man on Batman, which I've never actually listened to it. I probably should have I've listened to a handful. Yeah, but I guess this was one of them with Bruce Timm, and he was talking about, like, the censorship on the show, and Bruce Timm specifically mentioned what we talked about with Over the Edge, that the censors wouldn't let them show the body hit the car when Barbara falls, Mm -hmm. and that what they ended up being able to do was actually, like, way, way more intense when we see from the inside perspective. Yeah. So I thought that was, that was cool. I I think, I I maybe heard about that somewhere, but, Mm -hmm. yeah, that was a cool note. That's awesome. Thanks, Gordon. That was awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. But that's it. Just thought I'd mention those things. Awesome. Thanks for the little ego boost. I know. And if you uh, if you want to write to Cameron and say something nice about him. You don't have to. It's really nice that you do, but yeah. I, I can take it. Please let me know what I'm getting wrong. <laughs> we much prefer Please that. let me know how to correct yeah. this life that I'm on. I know. Let's let's keep him off his soapbox here. <laughs> it's getting dangerously haughty these days. Yes. Yes. Uh, but we are at Tim Talk Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram. And Gmail. Uh, I am at Lordifer on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you want to see my art, it's at Cameron.dexter. If you want to see my face, it's at Camdexter.adventure. No, Adventures. What, what is it? Camdexter Adventures underscore adventures. Shouldn't you know? I probably should, shouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, and if you want to see my shirts and stuff, uh, you can follow us at Core Memories Co. Yeah. We just passed a thousand subscribers or a oh, thousand followers. Congratulations! Thank you. That's awesome. Feels good. That should, that wasn't didn't take too very long actually. Two and a half months. Yeah, you guys are working super hard on that though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love to see that same level of dedication on our own social media. We're one tenth of the way there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're more than that. We're we're like we're like two hundred. 
No, like 119, are we? I think on we, Instagram, I think we, I think we've, been, we've been floating. It's not important. We don't have to talk about this on I air. I think we've been stuck at 119. We don't have to talk about this on air, Chris. For, for a while. No, we should talk about it on air. I want, I want the listeners to understand our struggles. Um, 120. Well, yeah. you know, but we appreciate every single one We of you. do. And we get more, I think we get more downloads than we have listeners anyway. It's not important. We can talk about the statistics yeah. off air. Exactly. <laughs> Anywho, we do appreciate it. I just want to listening. boost my ego one more time. I know. He just needs, he needs 700 to... downloads per episode, Chris. It's crazy. Oh, my God. If only that were true. I know. <laughs> well, anyways, thanks for listening, as always. Bye. Bye.